What's going on, everybody? It's Friday. You see my beautiful mug, this luscious beard. You know it's Friday, and that also means one other thing. We're joined with Mike Zuber from One Rental at a Time. How's it going, Mike? Hey, Matt. It's going really well. How do you like that 500 banner, huh? I was just going to say, see, I didn't say anything about it in our praise, <laughs> but I was looking at it, and I was like, 500 student deals. Well, somebody's hanging the matzo ball out there. That's right. <laughs> Let's go. And I got, I actually was brave enough. I bought 1,500 of these babies. I'm going to mail them out to every student that does a deal. That's so, fantastic. Uh, I love that idea. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Oh, man. I might need to just figure out a way to get on that list and I'll start letting you take credit for some of my deals. I'm good with that. Hey, man, you're in the course. You count I want the postcard. <laughs> I want the postcard, baby. Um, yeah, exactly. It's, it's all just about how you count the numbers, too. Yeah, so, of course. Hey, right. my goal, I get yeah. to count how I want. <laughs> Exactly. Perfect. We'll get some government math in there. So, so speaking of government math, I'm sitting here over the last couple of days watching rates after a five on the inflation ticker. Yeah. And watching rates make absolutely no sense and going down, which I'm thrilled with, but the 10 year under a bunch of this pressure. And so guys, what we want to cover today in the video for you guys is rates and Mike and I are already starting to see the mortgage market change yeah. and shift. And that's not a good thing because that is something where it starts to create an alternative uh, path, if you will, where all of a sudden the projects or the plans or the programs that are available to you start disappearing. So Mike, what, what are you making this armchair economist? What are you, what are you making of what we're finding here? Yeah, well, I think there was a couple of things that happened yesterday, right? So Thursday was a big day. It was the biggest day of the week. It was the CPI, right? Consumer yep. Price Index. Sure. What you and I pay at the grocery store and Home Depot and the gas station and all of that, right? So that's it's a big number. And it came in hot. It came in at 5%, as you said. Uh, the core came in at like 3.7. And, and, and these are hot and, and historically hot, right? These are you know 20, 30 years ago hot. And typically speaking, when you have inflation, the, you know, the 10-year the note, which is a good harbinger of future, uh, will go up, right? Because again, if you have, if you just do the math, folks, if you have inflation running at 5%, but you can borrow for 10 years at 1.44%, what should you do? You should, it's like, I'm going to borrow everything I can at 1.44 and just let it inflate. I mean, it's, it's kind of ludicrous. So I said this morning on the Daily Financial News that I think the Fed and perhaps with the Treasury are playing some kind of um, yeah. let's flood the market. And what, what really concerns me is I wonder if they're the only person at these auctions now. Yeah. Because if, they, if they're the only person at the auction, mm -hmm. they can set whatever price they want. They don't, have a, they don't have a mandate to make a profit. Right. So if they're the only one, like they, because again, they do an auction. They did an auction Thursday at one o'clock Eastern. Yeah, and it, they, I haven't read about it yet. I've been seeking it, but I can just imagine them looking around in the room, going, "Anybody want to bid? Anybody want to bid? <laughs> no? Well, screw it. I'll bid." Yeah, uh, and and they buy the entire tranche. So it's it's uh, it's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. And guys, for those of you who weren't around in 08 and 09, this is what Mike and I saw. We were mm -hmm. in there trying to talk to our banks and saying, "Hey, we need some money. Hey, we want some money. Yeah. Hey, give us some more money." Yeah. And we could we couldn't get it. They wouldn't give it to us. They would Dude, just I had say, a, nope. I had a wouldn't do it. No, I had a I had a bank. Oh. I had, so I walked in. So we've been buying all along. We, you know, we we had a track record. We never missed a payment. We had a great net worth, great income, great credit score, and a great down payment, right? Like everything, like 20 yeah. 20 percent down, 800 credit score, six figure income, seven figure net worth, track record of multi-years and never missing a payment. I walked into a bank who had most of our money. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we'd like a loan. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, Mr. Zuber, sorry, you know, we're not doing loan. We're not doing that now. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you're like I you didn't know, want to the donut shop, did I? Yeah. <laughs> you're, a, you're a bank, you're right? A bank, you're, right? You're, did you change your, you know, your, your job or whatever you're doing to serve clients? But yeah. no, they're like, hey, it's just, it's a short term thing. Mm -hmm. You know, again, they played it nice because again, they had my track record and they didn't want me to go anywhere. Sure. They're like, but go next door, right? Another big bank, which we all know. And this bank didn't know me from Adam. And they basically told me to F off. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, literally, it was that. It was that crass. It was like yeah. we're not investing to investors. You're the reason for the problem. Blah 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 blah. I'm like, I didn't make the freaking loans. You guys made the loans. Why is it my fault? <laughs> exactly. They were your requirements. I just met. Them. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, like you know. Yeah. It's crazy. That's exactly right. And so I remember that because I tried to do a deal in 08, or actually beginning of 09. And the best rate that I could get on a mortgage non-owner occupied was 10.125%. This is an 09. 09. Jeez. When rates were like around five and a half or six, 10.125, 10 and an eighth. Yeah. And I and was that's just, just, yeah, and, that's a and bank. Yeah, it was crazy. horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. So Mike, a couple of numbers that I want to throw at you that I think that, that I was doing some research last night, because again, with what happened to, you know, us, you know, guys that were in it in 08 was we were quickly trying to figure out, okay, what do I do with my existing portfolio? This means largely that refis are on the outs. I'm not going to be mm. able to refi anything. Buying mm -hmm. is going to be hard enough. And yeah. when I buy, what does that really look like? And so, yeah. you know, I want to kind of take you through some of these numbers that I heard. Well, I yeah, think, ahead, One, before we get there, yeah. I just want, I just want people to know what happened to you with that 10%. Yeah. So in my yeah. example, the bank just told me to F off. Well, yeah. what the bank did for you is they could technically still say we are lending to right. investors, right. but they're going to put out such a rate that right. only an idiot or a remarkable deal will let Correct. happen, right? Correct. Banks have the money. Banks make the rules. That's right. And that's that. people need to realize that if, if, if you just focus a little bit on what's going on in lending, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to see the future. And that's why what you're about to talk about you're seeing the tiddlywinks or whatever they are, tea the leaves. dominoes. The tea, tea leaves, leaves and the you. dominoes, yes. Yeah. And so you can actually predict the future. That's what we're about to do now because we're in the business. We're seeing things. I had a mortgage broker call me yesterday. We're going to talk about it. And now we can look out 60 days, 90 days and tell you what's right. going to happen or likely going to happen. Yeah. Go ahead. So here are some of the crazy numbers. Um, kind of amazing, honestly. Kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, the, let me just get my phone out here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. These numbers, when I saw them are downright amazing. Um, uh, let's see. Mortgage equity, the typical person that has a mortgage since January of 2020 now has 20% equity in their home. They've made 20%. Yeah. Not yeah. a bad investment in 18 months. Oh, no. and counting the fact that more of these morons on YouTube are calling for a 40% crash. Good job, <laughs> asshats. Hopefully no one listened to you because then a bunch yeah. of people just missed out on tens of thousands of dollars worth of equity. Yeah. You know, this is why you got to do your own work, right, Mike? I mean, do your work. Not do the work. Listen to YouTube. Do the work. Do the work. Second, only what percentage would you guess right now of people that own a home? Mm -hmm. What percentage of them would you guess were underwater in 09? Percentage Ooh. of homes underwater in 09? 17%. 26. 20. Guys, this is where a crash happens. 26% yeah. of people in 09, pre fallout of the crash, just mm -hmm. when the crash was really starting in most places, 26% mm -hmm. of homeowners, 26% of homeowners had negative equity in their homes, which means that they owed more on it than it was worth. Mike, yeah. how do you think that compares to now? Oh, geez. Today has got to be 4%? 1.6. Oh, that's awesome. 1.6% awesome. have negative equity in their homes right now. That's it. Yeah, that's amazing. 98.4% Mike have equity in their homes. 98.4%. Well, that, yeah. How positive is that? That's awesome. And that just goes, again, this time is so different. The pain, I did a video yesterday, actually two of them. The pain in the next crisis, which will come from all this cheap money is yeah. not housing. It's a multifamily, it's apartments. It's the big ones for sure. It's the big yep. ones. Yeah. Cause the yep. debt structure is all wrong, but yeah, folks, you can't, you're not going to have a tsunami of foreclosures, right? Not at You can't when people have equity, That's right. there's no distress, right? Well, I just happens, read the, what happens next, right? Mike, right? 
you and I talk about this all the time. This is your yeah. inventory play. Yeah, what exactly. Next, right? The very next thing to happen is inventory starts showing up. Hey, we're in trouble. Yeah. But we have 20% equity in our home because we bought it a year and a half ago. <laughs> exactly. That's amazing. Right? And yeah. the number that you have to count on is about 8% or so when you sell your house. So yep. you're still net positive 12, yep. right? A big number. You start seeing inventory. That's where yeah. Mike has been saying for months, expect to see inventory starting to climb. And they are, and they are at a mm -hmm. decent clip. Yeah. Um, you know, hoping that they get to the 2 million that Mike forecasted by the end of July, mm -hmm. but they're still going at a pretty good clip. But Mike, that's what we've been talking about for months is this is where the yeah. inventory comes from. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. This is, this is good. Everybody wants a bubble to pop, right? This is more like a balloon and yes, Agreed. balloons can pop, they but can. you know what? If you take your damn fingers off the, whatever that's called, you blow on. Yeah. You can let balloon out that way too. And that's, what's going to happen is we're just going to let, right. let the air out that way. No pop. It will, it will just slow down. It'll, we're going to go from a hundred miles an hour, that's which right. was 2020 to 40. Yep. It's going to feel right slow it is but trust me four percent appreciation six percent appreciation yep. doesn't suck if you own a couple of homes it's not gonna be like the stock market we're gonna wake up and at the end of the week we're down 20 percent yeah it's no, not like it's not gonna happen like that two yep. two other numbers that i thought were very very interesting the num what do you think the percentage is the percentage of homeowners is today that have 10 percent equity in their home 10%. Oh, at least 10%? At least 10%. And there's a 20% number too. So think 10% and think 20%. 92% have 10%. 95. Wow. Think about that. That means 95% of the people could effectively sell and not it, owe anything. And, and, and get at least away. a check. And, yeah, and get, get a little check. Yep. A little check. That's amazing. Yep. 95%. Amazing. And now on... On 20% equity? I'm going to go like 82%. 87 still. Jeez. 87. That's like 87. a real check. That's, that's like a, four figures. That's nuts, right? I mean, that's, that's a big number. Yeah. There's no distressed. You don't have distress when 95 or 96% have 10% equity or more. There's when, no distress to that. Sale. When only 1.6% <laughs> have negative equity? you're not nope. going to have a distressed market. And in quite frankly, everyone's <sighs> looking for that crash that happened yeah. in 08 and 09. Not happening. It would effectively, this number would need to go up literally a thousand percent. Like it's just, I mean, it, it has, I mean, you have to multiply it by 20 to get to the same number pretty much. Yeah. And again, you guys got to remember the timing involved. Everybody yes. wants the crash now. Right. You're, it, I mean, <laughs> At best, you're talking about a crash. I mean, if you if if all the dominoes lined up badly, you couldn't yeah. see a sale until 2024. Right. Right. I mean, we're talking years from now. Right. It's just crazy. It's it's absolute, absolute insanity. And then one other thing, just a little bit of my personal bone to pick. I'm sure Diana Olick is a lovely lady, <laughs> but I swear to God, she has no concept of financial math whatsoever when it comes to actually telling you what a good market is. Let me put it as simply as I possibly can, because I think so many people miss it because the talking heads make it confusing. Mm -hmm. The numbers I've written down are this, is that right now they say housing is up 13% over the last 12 months, okay? We're up 13%. Everyone says, well, it's outpacing inflation of wages because that's only 7%. <laughs> yeah. There's a flaw in the math. Yeah. You don't use a hundred percent of your wages to get your mortgage. Mortgage is typically 20% of your actual wages. Mm -hmm. So what that actually means is if you take the 13% increase in home, in home values, that 13% divide it by 0.2, because that's the 20% that most people home wise are on even 25%, mm -hmm. but at 20%, mm -hmm. it's 2.6, mm -hmm. right? At 25%, you're just over three, mm -hmm. but you're still making 7% more. So yeah. wages are not being outpaced by the increased value of your home and the inflation and the price of your home. 
No, that's, and that's why I focus. That's why, you know, gun to head, the only metric I follow is the affordability index. That's right. It takes it's all that price, into account. payment, income. It's that's that, right. it's that triangle. That's and right. yeah, incomes up 7% makes homes more affordable. So in my market, if that happened, I would go from a 42 to a 46, which means it's safer. That's to right. Invest because it takes into account income. So yeah, it's affordability is magical. So if you can't find the affordability index in your market, because sometimes they only do it for the state and they don't do it for your mm -hmm. individual market, just mm -hmm. look at your individual market and then look at what house prices are up and then what wages are up. Mm -hmm. And that will help you back into the number of this is about where we're at. Yep. Um, that's what will help you with that number. So Mike, there's just a ton of information. We've just gone through a ton of numbers. All in all, it looks like to me that things are shifting a bit when it comes to the availability of those mortgages, because I went to yep. go refi that mortgage. Now on an investor, non-owner occupied duplex, the best deal I could get from one of my existing banks was a five-year mortgage adjustable rate that at the end of the five years could go up as much as 5% with a starting rate of about 3-4. So I could be at an 8.5. 4% rate on my mortgage in five years when it resets, if rates go a little bit nutty, but it still could be six or seven, which still doubles my payment. Yeah. I'm not sure I sign up for that one. Yeah. I said, thank you very much. Sadly, I'm going to take the portfolio away from you. Yeah. We're going to go somewhere. Else. Yeah, yeah. You've got to get 30 year fixed rate money on, on any residential property. Anything four units or less. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to be 30 year fixed. And that's the luxury that 99% of the people watching this have fixed debt, 30 go years, go get it when you can get it. If the numbers make sense on the property, yep. the debt's about as cheap as you're going to get right now. It just is. Amen. Mike, any other thoughts before we close out on this one? No, I think you nailed it. Uh, again, folks, there's a couple of things. Watch the lending market. You don't have to watch it as closely as you do your real estate market, True. but always be asking, is lending getting easier or harder? And what I think you're hearing from Matt and I is lending is getting harder and um, that will have ripple effects. Yep. It definitely is. I mean, they're scared. You know, I was talking to a mortgage broker. He said 70% of the deal, only 70% of the deals that he has right now are making it past the appraisal phase. He said 30% of them are not hitting appraisal. Wow. Well, or are, or are way priced high or, or agreed to yep. far higher than appraisal is better said. Yeah. Yeah. The market's so, changing. So pay yeah. attention. If you're an investor, keep doing the work. More inventory is coming. Uh, they, the last year is the hardest time I've seen in 20 years to find a deal. The next yeah. 12 won't nearly be as hard. Agreed. Do the work. Agreed. Mike, where can everybody find you, my friend? One rental at a time. And of course, if you do a deal this year, you got to tell me about it. I will mail you one of these great postcards just to recognize you. And uh, we're going to do 500 deals, God damn it. Come high, those, hell or high water. One of those postcards autographed, Mike. Is that what I heard you say? You're going to yes. autograph the postcard? Ab absolutely. See, I don't know what better you can get. You got a you, you got go. a you got a guy who's writing the top three on the Forbes bestseller for real estate investing, signing yes, your card saying you did a deal based on the program. I don't know if it gets any better than that. I'd frame it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I would. So, Mike, thanks so much for the time, my friend. We'll see you in segment two. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys.